I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so glad that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, I want to talk about something that I hear from clients all the time during some of our first sessions together, that they're afraid of change or the fear of change. So let's break it down. I hear all the time that change is scary, but here's the thing. What if we need change? The world thrives on change, agriculturally, seasonally, evolutionarily, in the Darwinian sense, in the personal sense, and in the professional sense. Everything changes. So why do people fear it? Well, I have some ideas, including that in high stress situations, people like certainty. They like the known rather than the unknown. And that is totally understandable. In my work with clients, the fear of change often looks like avoiding application cycles for two reasons. One, for fear of not getting in. And two, for fear of getting in. And what that might mean for their lives. What would it mean to get in? What would people think of you? Would you have to move? How would you feel? Uncomfortable, nervous, excited, anxious, sad? All of these and more? Probably. People delay because they're afraid of change, settling for their current situation. But here's the thing. If you fear change and you make decisions from that place of fear, only making decisions that keep you in your comfort zone without challenging yourself, without taking the shot, without striving for more, for that life beyond your wildest dreams, then be prepared to be in your exact situation in 5, 10, 20 years, settling for less when you know just as well as I do that you're capable of more, way more. And often in the world of applications and academic and professional advancement, The fear of change also comes from the fear of the unknown. Fear of change when the outcome is unknown. Fear of the application cycle because there are just so many unanswered questions. Fear of what's next and what will change from your current comfort, your current guarantees, your current security. Or you might have people around you that fear change for you. What will happen if? And it may come from a place of caring, but it can still hold you back even just by making you doubt yourself and your choices. So what happens if you let this fear internally or externally imposed inform your decision-making process? You stay still, you stay static in a world that is otherwise dynamic and ever-changing. See, things are meant to change. Nothing is meant to stay the same. It's just not possible. And let's face it, even if we were to stay the same, in that dead-end job, not investing in ourselves, things will still change around you, but we won't have control over them. Someone else will. Those changes will come from the top down and you'll wonder where your autonomy went and how long it's been gone for. You'll sit back and you'll think, what the heck am I doing here? Whether it's in a week, two weeks, a month, five years, or 10 years, you will think, how did I get here? Where did I miss my chance to actually make a change? You will wish you made a change. Sometimes we outgrow our social circles and that's okay. And you might be afraid to branch out and meet new people for fear that the comfort of your current social circle may not be right for you anymore. And that's okay. Things change. People change. Our circles ebb and flow. And that's okay. The harder we hold on for things to stay the same, the more stubbornly stuck we stay. We attend university or other educational institutions, but then we graduate like we're meant to, but maybe before we feel ready. That's change. You may be excited, nervous, anxious. You may fear the unknown. What's next? What will I do? What will my day-to-day look like? Who will be around me? Who will I be? These are all questions that at least subconsciously inform a fear of change. 
I had a call recently with a prospective client who then became a client. And in the call, this prospective client said to me, you know, I'm actually okay with my full-time job. And they were involved in other extracurriculars. And so they said to me, I'm dedicated to this applications process, but also I'm okay if it doesn't really pan out. And a few things happened. First, I realized that they had gone through several steps to get on the call with me, right? They had listened to the podcast. They had interacted with us on social media. They had gone to the trouble of booking an appointment in my calendar. They confirmed the appointment and they came. And so for somebody who was okay in their full-time job to go through all of those steps to speak with me about working together, I knew that there was something more. I knew that something more was going on. So I said to them, okay, you tell me you're okay in your full-time job, but what does that look like for you in one year, five years, 10 years? And they said, well, you know, I, I don't really see myself in that full-time job in five years or 10 years, but right now it's okay and I'm comfortable there. And I said to them, okay, so what's stopping you from applying to programs? And they said, well, you know, nothing except that I'm, I'm okay here. And they went on to explain all the things that they had done to prepare for this application process, all of the different efforts that they had put in in the different areas of their life. And so I said to them, it doesn't really seem like you're okay with your full-time job, which by the way, was a dead-end full-time job. And they said, well, like, what do you mean? And I said, it sounds to me like you're afraid of change, changing of circumstance, changing of situation, changing of schedule, changing of your social group, changing of the people around you, changing of your work hours, changing of the level of involvement that you have at your workplace. There's a lot of change that goes on when you are successful in an applications process. And I said to them, it sounds like you're telling yourself that you'd be okay just in case what you so hope for doesn't happen. Or if it does, that the change that will come will be potentially drastic in the way that it affects your day to day, that you're telling me you're okay staying in this job, but I don't really think that you are. And they sat back and they said to me, you know what? I'm not okay in this job forever. I am capable of more. And it took about 10 seconds for this now client to make this realization and to say, okay, you've identified it. I'm really fast at identifying these things really quick because I see it so often. And so I said to them, okay, so what's your next step? The next step, of course, is not to quit the full-time job because we need a plan, right? We need a plan. We need to complete their applications in order to advance, in order to have the best possible chance at securing admission in their choice program. So we developed a plan and now we're working through it. So I think that this is so important because I think that we, a lot of us can actually relate to this feeling of the fear of change, whether it's good change or bad change. I remember growing up always having jitters about the first day of school and the way that that will change my schedule and the social circles will change and who's going to be in our class and who's, what, who are the, who's the teacher going to be? Or, you know, what is this year of university going to be like? Or what is starting a master's program going to look like? Or what is starting a PhD program going to look like? And we're in it for the long haul. And then what is starting law school going to look like? And then every single year in those programs is a little bit different. And there is change as the programs go on. But here's the thing. The change is your growth. And if you don't welcome that change, then we stay stuck. So what if we didn't have to fear change? What if instead we reframe change to result from our ability to grab life by the horns, feel empowered, and take on new opportunities? What if we think about change as a good thing, as a constructive and productive outcome of making good choices that are right for you? What if your fear of change originates from feeling out of alignment? Out of alignment, perhaps, with what others expect of you versus what you want for yourself? Or what if you're not even at that point where you can name what it is that you want? So you're being told by others what is best for you, but this feels icky to you. You feel out of alignment. Being able to reframe change to be something useful is hard work because it requires a total reanalysis of our comfort levels and expectations of ourselves. 
It requires us to take some risk. It requires us to invest in ourselves. If we're not careful with the way that change goes, we could find ourselves in a position that we don't want to be in. So in this process of reframing change, we also have to be very, very aware that we want the change to occur in such a way that it benefits us so that strategically we can build that life beyond our wildest dreams. Because why not? Why not? Change forces us to not be complacent. Complacency is the opposite of change and complacency is easy, but it's not good for our minds and it's not good for our bodies. Complacency breeds frustration with our circumstances, perhaps frustration with those around us and with ourselves, and can lead to self-blame and resentment of the self and others, both in the present and decades down the road. I work with some clients who suddenly wake up after a decade or more in their profession and suddenly think to themselves, how did I get here? The answer is usually complacency. Turning a blind eye to their circumstances because they're simply getting paid and that used to be enough. Or because they used to like their jobs, but then things changed, again, maybe out of their control. Or because things just got busy, plain and simple. But what would happen if you didn't let yourself get complacent in the first place? If you embraced opportunity, i.e. change, rather than feared it? Where would you be in five years, 10 years, 50 years, if you made this decision today to use change to your benefit? What decisions would you make today, tomorrow, the next day? What would you have? Who would be around you? How would you feel? How would you think about yourself? If the only option was continued success through receiving opportunities that present themselves to you, what would your life look like? What decisions would you have made yesterday? If you weren't afraid of change, maybe you would have procrastinated less. Maybe you would have looked up that program. Maybe you would have sent that email inquiring about that new opportunity. Maybe you would have applied for that promotion that you deserve. What decisions would you make today if you weren't afraid of change? And what if you viewed change as opportunity that could totally change your life for the better? Maybe you would start your applications for the program of your dreams. Maybe you would reevaluate the people who are making you feel worse about yourself, your situation, and your future. I'm willing to bet that if you weren't afraid of change, you would start building a life beyond your wildest dreams. Who would you be in the future, tomorrow, the next day, in one week, in one month, if you weren't afraid of change? What decisions would you make? If you made decisions from a place of empowerment rather than fear, who would you be? What kind of impact could you have and how much and how soon would you place an upper limit on yourself even subconsciously or would you realize that you have no upper limit and that any change that you can experience and have the luxury to participate in could actually change your life for the better to introduce you to people whom you never would have met, go places you never would have gone, sit around tables that you never would have had a voice at. Who would you be? Where would you be? What would you have and who would be around you if you released the fear and embraced the change? I'm willing to bet that you could make some pretty big strides pretty quickly. What I see when I work with my clients is that when they embrace change and when I start to ask bigger questions of them, their frame of mind, their perspective shifts from asking will I do this to how will I do this? I'll give you an example. You might ask, will I get into X program rather than how will I get into X program? You might ask, will I achieve the kind of life that I want? Or you can ask, how will I achieve a life beyond my wildest dreams? You see, the former, the will I question has only one possible type of answer outcome, a binary yes or no. The how will I question stem critically asks about a process, even if the process is unknown. You at least realize that there's a critically important process that needs to happen to achieve your goal. So I want you to take a second. If you're multitasking, just take one second to be here with me. And I want to ask you a question. You can close your eyes or if you're walking or driving, please keep your eyes open for me, okay? 
And I want you to identify the first thought that comes to your mind. You're not afraid of change. Change is opportunity. Change is an open door for you. Change is growth. Change is development. Change is productive. Change will launch you forward. Change allows you to build that life beyond your wildest dreams. You don't build a life beyond your wildest dreams by staying still, static, stagnant. You embrace change. You welcome change. You appreciate change. Coming from this place of openness, abundance, and opportunity, what is the change that you are going to welcome into your life to propel you forward? What is the change that needs to happen for you to build a life beyond your wildest dreams? What is holding you back? What is stopping you? And how will you change it? What does your life look like if you don't make that change? And what does your life look like if you do make that change? That thought you just had, identify it. Don't be afraid of it. If it's a big thought, a big change, don't ignore it. Don't suppress it. Don't think you're not worthy. You are worthy. If it's big, who cares? Your next question is, how will I make that change? Not, will I make the change? Because you're here with me, I know you will make that change. The question is how. You're not static. You're not stagnant. You're not stuck. You're dynamic, full of experience, full of opportunity. And now you can make the changes that you need to build a life beyond your wildest dreams. It won't happen overnight, but with consistency and continued thoughtfulness and mindfulness, you'll build it, that life, the one beyond your wildest dreams. And I'm here for it. I'd love it if you could send me a DM and let me know what that changes for you. Honestly, DM me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for being here with me and see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.